with the opening ceremonies of the New Okanagan Lake Bridge just days away. We continue our series on the history of the lake crossing. Today, a look at the massive undertaking of a building of building the first bridge across the lake. It's the early 1950s, and the outlook in BC is promising. There's a whole complexion of, of optimism that's rolling around after World War II. Consumerism is on the rise, tourism is on the rise, and in order to really capture that consumerism, it's really about getting access to resources, and it's a transportation infrastructure that helps us do that. But in the Okanagan, capitalizing on that burgeoning consumerism was proving difficult. The reason? the body of water that separated Kelowna and West Side, But the government of the day was about to fix that. The social credit government in general, and W.A.C. Bennett in particular, really saw transportation as pivotal to gaining access to the resources of the province. It was really a philosophy of roads to riches that led to economic development. And especially in the Okanagan, well aware of the huge economic potential that will be brought about with a better link between the central and south Okanagan the Premier, in 1955, announced that a bridge would be built. It would be a major technological undertaking for the time, but one that would have a major impact on the entire valley. What we have here is a bridge that's really the solution to the economic problems of the Okanagan Valley that we've seen for 100 years. The project began moving with astonishing speed. Because engineers discovered the lake bottom could not support a massive fixed structure, they recommended a floating bridge. Construction of the $7.5 million project was started in 1956 with some 200 workers on the job. The massive project required the construction of two graving docks where a dozen pontoons weighing 2,500 tons each were built. Those pontoons required two anchors each, just like this one behind me. It's on display here in Cologne at the corner of Alice Street and Highway 97 for everyone to see. These anchors weigh 70 tons each and are embedded 25 feet into the lake bottom. A concrete plant also had to be constructed, as well as access roads on both sides of the lake. It was only then that crews could begin building the actual metal part of the structure. Amazingly, the colossal project was finished in less than two years. This was a huge deal for everybody, not just in Kelowna, but the whole Okanagan Valley, and even got Princess Margaret over here to open this bridge in July 1958. And I mean, it was a huge day of pomp and ceremony and, and lots of activities. Not only were huge crowds on hand to witness this historic event, but the entire ceremony was broadcast live on CHBC television, which had just celebrated its opening too. Bridge changed, ev changed everything. John Sugars, who's with the Okanagan Historical Society, says the new structure opened up the Okanagan to the world. It, it opened up an awful big avenue of, of uh, transportation, uh, commerce. The whole thing was uh, the change, it just changed the whole deal here. Tourists began flocking to the valley in ever increasing numbers, and industry began to spring up. But it's Kelowna that really experienced the biggest transformation. Until the middle of the 20th century, Kelowna wasn't considered a hub. In fact, in terms of size, economy and political clout, Vernon and Penticton were considered far more important. But Kelowna's new floating bridge spurred development and led to a population boom that continues to this day. 